Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And once again, an incredibly heartfelt thank you to Ms. Haidawaji and Ms. Siddick for your truly moving testimony to hear about the unique vulnerabilities of women being exploited um, by the genocide taking place in China right now is really heartbreaking. And quite frankly, equally heartbreaking is um, hearing about how young people are at these camps. I have two teenagers and to hear that 17 and 18 year olds are uh, being exploited in the same ways at these camps is horrifying. So thank you for your testimony, for the courage it takes um, when I know you must fear for family members and relatives at home. Thank you as well, Mr. Turkle. Uh, again, horrible to hear you, you may never see your parents again. Um, and the courage that you've shown as well, it, it really, I think, humbles all of us here tonight. So thank you. Um, we heard tonight some testimony about uh, the Chinese TikTok company and how they have participated in the surveillance architecture of the state and have been complicit in the genocide taking place against the Uyghurs. And yet, at a hearing earlier today when TikTok CEO Chu was asked about this, he said, quote, I'm here to discuss TikTok and what we do as a platform. It seems as if a more complete answer would have included what TikTok does as a platform to help architect the surveillance state, uh, which has been involved in these atrocities. But it's not TikTok alone. We know that Chinese technology companies, many of which still do business here in the United States, are providing surveillance and tracking technology that not only enable the surveillance state in China, but also uh, for would-be autocrats across the world. So Representative Pfluger and I have legislation, the Uyghur Human Rights Sanctions Review Act, that would give President Biden the authority to sanction these companies under the Global Magnitsky Act. And I think my colleagues on this committee could be instrumental in getting that legislation across the finish line. And that's something I will work to do um, along with them. Uh, we have taken steps, important steps, as we've heard, um, like the Uyghur Forced Labor Protection Act, the Inflation Reduction Act, the CHIPS Act, and the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law to boost incentives to reshore our supply chains and reward those companies that do the right thing. But we all know tonight more must be done, and I look forward to working with the members of this committee to finish that work. So given the secrecy of Beijing's human rights abuses in Xinjiang and the difficulty in finding information on the labor used to produce goods for export, how can the U.S. government, how can we, do better at making sure we are further boosting insights into how certain products are made in China and making sure that we have a supply chain that does not involve labor from Xinjiang or exporting that through third party countries back into the <coughs> United States. Um, and Mr. Turkle, Mr. Zentz, if you'd like to reply. First of all, uh, Congresswoman, thank you so much for your um, a sympathy for my family situation. Um, um, <clears throat> I wish the circumstances will change and I will welcome my mother back to the United States to uh, meet her American children uh, <clears throat> and American grandchildren. She has five US born um, grandchildren, but she only met one so far. Uh, it's painful, it's extremely painful. Um, to your question, um, two, a couple of things need to be uh, taken into consideration. One. As I alluded earlier, there, the, this bill has faced some challenges. Um, it is almost disturbing to hear the folks uh, who are advocating uh, co cooperation with China on climate crisis wanted to water this down. That's a wrong approach. Laws meant to be made to be implemented. We need to fully implement this law. And then the other thing that we need to look into is uh, close the loopholes within China. There, we've been receiving news regarding human trafficking, uh, transporting uh, Uyghur workers to inland China. We're also hearing uh, uh, change of labels, uh, country of origin. 
technology should be able to address that. Um, I recently spoke at the Tech Expo organized by CBP. They're talking about using DNA technology to trace. So technology um, and also consumer advocacy is also very important.